Eternal Starlight is a tactical space combat game with some roguelike elements. From your command ship, it hooks you up to a neural link to give a holographic overview of the battlefield, asking you to take control over your ever-expanding fleet of ships. It's available now on Steam and Oculus Quest, so let's take a look. Immersed Robot Hello everyone, welcome to Immerse Robot. So, Eternal Starlight is a VR space real-time strategy game, something I've enjoyed before with something like Starblazer, and I also believe there's a game called Battle Group VR, which I haven't played yet, but I'm very interested to try, and I've heard a lot of good things about actually. But with regards to Eternal Starlight, I did play the Oculus Quest version on my Quest 2 and straight from the off it feels very nicely polished with an impressive intro um, and good science fiction music as well. It's got a nice science fiction ambience to the introduction as you find yourself within this ship and you know all the environments look great on the Quest. I have seen some screenshots of the Steam VR version because this game is available on Steam as well and they do look better but the Quest version is is perfectly serviceable and it does look great in the headset. So immediately I went into the brief tutorial where it shows you all the very basics but this doesn't take too long it took me around 10 minutes to play through the tutorial and again it shows you the basics and then you're ready to start and when you do start a new game it does refer to some roguelike elements within the game although strictly speaking I don't think you could class this game as a roguelike necessarily but it does contain permadeath and uh, the mission maps and the rewards are randomized on each playthrough on each run and you select which missions you choose to do from the map in a certain number of turns before the final battle and then there is gameplay beyond that final battle as well and also it does explain before you go into the first playthrough that you will not do all the missions on a single run it does take time to go through and progress to the point where you will have finished all the missions that the game has to offer so gameplay within each mission is really about positioning your ship strategically and selecting various weapons targeting various parts parts of enemy ships, uh, certain functions within enemy, enemy ships at appropriate times in order to destroy them or protect certain things and complete goals. And there is a bit of uh, variation in the mission types as well, it's not just destroying ships. There are missions for example which I played in these first two hours which I'm talking about with this game here, that where you are sort of guarding bombs and exploding them on asteroids just to clear a path and remove the path of these asteroids. So it's not all about just destroying enemy ships and there is a little bit of variation with regards to that. Between each mission as well you get the option to purchase new ships, expand your fleet and also upgrade the ships that you have in your fleet at that moment. So you can choose from various weapons, weapon modifications and defense mechanisms as well which you can apply to your ship as you earn credits by doing the various missions. And the general idea of the game is to complete a certain number of missions before the enemy, the Kraya attach your mothership at your home system of Proxima and by doing all these missions before the final battle, selecting the correct missions that you want to do and helping the correct factions, then you will gain allies within this campaign and these allies can then aid you in this final battle with the Kraya. And once you've completed this final battle, the game then continues to progress and you can get some more missions before you then go on for another battle. And that's gen generally how the game works, at least that's my impression within these first two hours anyway and I should make it clear that this is very much a first impressions video but I have put in around two hours haven't done great but I've done my best with it and I did a number of runs I still haven't quite completed that final mission unfortunately but that's probably more on me than the game itself so straight off I could tell immediately that I was going to love various aspects of this game I love this low poly clean aesthetic of the graphics that it has the way you can zoom in and zoom out of the battlefield and really see the detail on these ships and then zoom out and see the entire battlefield in a much more kind of overview. Then there's this ambient science fiction music which just screams 80s nostalgia for some bizarre reason to me. Um, I really like the music and the way it sets the tone of the game is fantastic. The sound didn't really stand out to me too much but it was perfectly fine and you know some of the explosions sound great and the weapon systems as well they all sound perfectly fine you know I, w I won't say that they blew me away or anything but they were perfectly fine within this game too. Another thing I really liked was the onboarding and the tutorial it doesn't last too long 
long you don't get tired of it before you get straight into the game but it does show you all the basic functions that you need to progress through this game and it's how you apply what it teaches you there within the game as to how well you do it's also got some narrative elements which bind all of these missions together in some way and it and it does feel like there is some kind of larger arc that is playing through the the whole story as well but i couldn't read too much into that i will say that with the narrative elements and these things that you have to progress through between each mission these dialogues and things like that which you can skip they, I did find myself increasingly skipping some of these as the game went on. They just didn't really draw my attention as much as I had hoped and they sort of got in the way a little bit if I'm being honest after a while. But um, it's great that it's got this narrative element just to give you a little bit of depth to the world I suppose. Although I would say that I did tend to skip them as it went on. The other thing as well, the difficulty is great to begin with um, and I will say that I felt like most of the missions up to that first battle with the Kraya were very easy, they only last a few minutes each and then you're straight into this really big battle and I honestly felt underprepared, I hadn't prepared myself properly for this battle and I failed pretty quickly with that. The, the difficulty spiked so harshly within that battle that um, I had to take a step back and really sort of start planning my strategy as to how I was going to progress because all these missions are really leading up to that final battle and you need to really work out exactly what you need to do to, in order to de defeat those enemies in that in that battle which I probably ignored a little bit on my first playthrough and I've played a few runs since then as well but I'm still not quite playing it correctly I don't think I've still not quite finished that first final battle but I'm, I'm determined to do it at some point and overall this game it does scratch that RTS itch while also using some of these roguelike elements so if you fail that final battle you will go back to the beginning and you'll have to start a new game again and you don't really carry anything across after that but then the missions are randomised and some of the rewards that you'll get from each mission randomized as well so it's got some of these roguelike elements i wouldn't really call it a roguelike necessarily but it, it certainly plays on some of those aspects so as you can probably tell, I did really enjoy my time in Eternal Starlight. It does fill that gap with the RTS genre nicely, along with certain other games as well. And it's priced about right in my opinion too. So it's £14.99 over here in the UK and $19.99 in the US on the Oculus Quest store. And it will offer plenty of hours of gameplay. It's got that replayability factor as long as you don't mind that permadeath kind of experience where if you do fail in that first battle or subsequent battles then you are taken back to the start although it will save your progress in between so if you play a few missions and you've decided you've had enough for the day then it will save your progress and you can jump back in but if you do die in that final battle then it will take you all the way back to the start without anything carrying over you're basically randomized starting out with these missions again and the rewards and you'll start it's like starting from scratch basically again and um, so as long as you don't mind that aspect of it then I will really recommend this and I wasn't too sure of that aspect before I went in and tried it but it did grab me and the more I've played it the more I've got into this game so again just a couple of hours in but uh, I can definitely see myself playing a little bit more of this I think it's uh, it's really well done very nicely polished and it runs great on the quest too so a big recommend for me on this one for anybody who likes this genre but that's pretty much it from this video thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time please consider supporting Immerse Robot on Patreon, or joining the Discord, or following me on Twitter, or better yet, all of the above. Links in the description below.